right, so today it is day nine of 15 days of foundation. This is where we try out a new foundation every single day for 15 days. I have days one through eight linked down below in a playlist. I am freaking schwitzing in this sweater. It's snowing outside today in Seattle, which is very exciting, but uh, I'm a little too toasty in this room. So today is another new release foundation. This is by Hourglass, and it's their new Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. So they have a Vanish stick foundation, which has always looked really horrible on my skin. I reviewed that stick foundation when I had oily skin and now since having dry skin, I've also tried it again and it still looks horrible on my skin. So that's just one of those foundations that just doesn't work out for me. But this is supposed to be a full coverage liquid version of that. So I am stoked to try this. This foundation retails for $56. You actually don't get a full ounce. You get 0.84 fluid ounces, but when you read the description, it does say you're supposed to have to use like less than normal. It says it's a highly concentrated liquid foundation designed to deliver instant full coverage with just half a pump, no primer needed. Applies like a second skin. It's supposed to have a soft focus finish and it's also supposed to be waterproof, transfer proof and sweat proof. Comes in 32 shades. I didn't really have an idea of what shade I was gonna be because I don't think I've ever found like a perfect shade match in Hourglass products for my skin. But this one is porcelain, which says fair neutral undertone. I'm gonna insert swatches here of this foundation. I'm gonna try and find my stick foundation so I can swatch it next to that and I'll pop in a few other swatches too just so you can see how the shade compares. All right so swatches in natural lighting my neighbor is uh, watching me do this right now so this is real fun but right here is the Hourglass New Vanish Liquid Foundation in the shade Porcelain. So this is the one I'm wearing in the video and I'm trying out. I'll explain later on in the video but I actually ended up ordering a second shade and I'm filming these swatches a couple days later so I wanted to include the shade that I ordered. This one is the shade Cream, and just by the look of it, this is looking like it's gonna be a much better shade match for me. It's a bit lighter and it definitely looks more neutral, but this is the Vanish Stick Foundation in the shade Blanc, and then the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation in the shade Alabaster. So hopefully, if you know your shade in the stick foundation, that'll give you some reference since both of these are darker than these two stick foundation shades. Right, here's the Hourglass Illusion Skin Tint in the shade Vanilla. Have a review on this, have a review on all these. This is the L'Oreal New Fresh Wear Foundation that we reviewed in day two in the lighter shade 400. Fenty Beauty Foundation in 110. CYO Life Proof in 101 and Dermacol 208. Okay, so right now it's 10.53 in the morning. It only snows in Seattle like once or twice a year usually, so when it does, it's a big deal, okay? This is one of those downsides of being self-employed when you get a snow day and everyone has a day off and uh, you're still working. It's all good. Okay, this looks like uh, it looks a little bit yellow, but we'll see. I feel like I'm totally forgetting to do or say something. I don't know, man. I think we're good. Okay, it's day nine. It feels like day nine. <laughs> Let's go in on this side. Whoa. Holy shit. See, it's definite full coverage. And uh, yeah, a little bit goes a long way. I'm going to spread that up to my forehead. Shade is definitely not a neutral undertone. It's much more of a yellow undertone than neutral. So I think the shade description is a little bit off on this one. And the shade for me is definitely too dark and it's also darkening and oxidizing quite a bit on my neck right now. I'll definitely need to return this for a different shade because the shade is way off. It blended out really easily. Like that felt very velvety. With the brush, coverage is definitely full coverage that covered pretty much everything. And I did just need a tiny amount. Like you guys saw that spread across my whole half of my face. It's not looking the best on my forehead. It's looking like a little bit textured right here, but down here it looks pretty nice. It looks like a satin finish. It looks like it's starting to settle right here. Let's do a sponge on the other side. I'm curious to see how this does with the sponge. Usually I get a little bit less coverage with the sponge. Oh yeah, love the coverage of this one. If you have acne, I do think this is one that would cover. This is like full coverage. This is like Huda Beauty kind of coverage. I'm not using a lot of product at all, so that's also great. You can use less product but still get full coverage. I love that. So I'm gonna go over my forehead with the sponge. See if that helps the finish at all right between my eyebrows. Is it too bright? Okay, I turned it down a little bit. I felt like it was too bright. It's definitely looking much drier on the sponge side. Like there are some parts of my face that are looking a little bit patchy, like around my nose right here and over here. Over here, it's not looking like that at all on the brush side. It's looking patchy. This reminds me of the way the LA Girl Pro Matte Foundation blended out where you could almost see like a difference in shade on your face as you were blending it out. The brush side overall looks much better. I got a little bit better coverage on the brush side. This is like opaque full coverage. This one's like, you can still see a little bit coming through. 
I would definitely use a brush with this just because of how dry this side is making my skin look. So I'm just going to go over with a tiny, tiny bit on this side just to get the same kind of coverage and hopefully kind of even it out. Okay, so now that's covering everything. I feel like as it's sitting on my skin, it's starting to look a little bit heavy and like cakey. At first it did look kind of just soft and like satin and now as it's drying down, it's looking a little bit heavy and just dry. So I think this is one that when I'm trying it again for the wrap up video where I test all the foundations again for weeks and then do an update, I would return it for the right shade. Then I would also set my face with my Catrice Dewy Glow or just some kind of setting spray to kind of like make it look more skin-like because it is just looking a little bit cakey. Love the coverage though. The coverage is great. It feels soft, kind of like velvety. It isn't totally drying down, but ooh. That definitely transferred. So this is supposed to be transfer proof. I'm gonna give it a few minutes to see if it sets down a little bit more and see if I don't have to powder this part of my face because just the way it's looking, I'm a little bit scared to put a powder on because I think it'll just look super cakey. We're bringing this all the way down, folks. We're gonna call the check-in time 11 o'clock. I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup. We'll get a shot in natural lighting and we'll do a flash test. Okay, it's 11, 17, but the check-in time is 11 o'clock. So the rest of my makeup went on fine over top without setting it with a powder like my Bron bleh. Blending bronzer went on totally fine over top without a powder, so that's good. It did feel like it kind of set down some more. It doesn't feel super tacky to the touch now, so I like that. Overall, I like the coverage. That's like the only thing I like about it right now. It's, you know, exactly what I just told you before. Just like creasing, looking pretty heavy in certain areas, but we'll see how it looks in natural lighting. Sometimes it looks better, so on the rest of my face, I used this It Cosmetics bronzer again the Radiance Ombre Bronzer. And I felt like this did help to kind of like even out the undertone of this since it's so yellow and this is more of like a red toned kind of bronzer. It helped to make me look hopefully not as like sickly today. Didn't use a blush, but I went in with this highlighting palette by Flower Beauty. I actually have this on my lid and then this is on my inner corner and then this is also just my face highlight. And on my eyes, this is also just in my crease. That's all I did for eye makeup. And then for lips, I kind of mixed these two products. This I am friggin' in love with. Wet Wild Caught You Bare Naked. Like, I think it's supposed to be a gloss. That's what it seems like to me, like a kind of pigmented gloss. Super pretty, light pinky nude shade. I feel like I'm gonna get a ton of use out of this. And I put this underneath. This is the Sugar Sugar by Marc Jacobs. Super pretty nude shade. I tried this in my Shadow and Schmooze video where I used this. So let's go into natural lighting. I'm excited to open the windows and go look at the stuff. Okay, we're in front of the window in natural lighting. So let me grab my mirror and check it out. Actually, it looks a little bit better, I think, in natural lighting. Overall, just like looking at my face from this length, you know, up close, I can still definitely see the same things, but hopefully it just doesn't crease worse throughout the day. I do think it looks slightly better out here. Here's zoomed in. I like the finish that this has. I like that it has like a satin skin-like kind of finish and it does feel lightweight. I forgot to say that. The consistency of it does feel very skin-like, like they say, and just lightweight. So I like that it doesn't feel like a super heavy, you know, like full coverage foundation. And I feel like just as I'm talking, I can't really like feel this foundation on my face at all. So I like that about it. And I do think if you have less texture, this will probably look really pretty. If you have textured skin like I do and you just like crease a lot and stuff, this one is looking not like the most smoothing, but it doesn't look horrible. And I'm liking it a lot better right now, actually. I have a feeling that this one mixed with CYO is gonna be like beautiful. Just because this one's like almost there, it just needs a little help with smoothing everything out. So I think that could be a good combo. But let's do a flash test. Whoa, I almost dropped my phone. Whenever a foundation is like very off, like shade wise for my skin, it's kind of hard to tell with the flashback what the situation is because if it's already dark for you, it's not gonna be as obvious in flash if it's like super flashbacky, you know, that makes sense. So I can't 100% tell with this one. I don't think it has a horrible flashback, but again, the shade is already a little bit dark to start with. I'll check in with you guys in a few hours back in natural lighting. Okay, it's now 3.20, so it's been on for almost like four and a half hours. I'm doing this one a little bit early because I'm starting to feel not so great, but let's look at the foundation. About, I wanna say like an hour and a half after I stopped filming, I noticed my creasing getting like significantly worse. And overall, I just look a little bit on the dry side, just mostly around like my mouth area. By the way, I tried the Pacifica concealer today. Not a fan. It's like worn off and also just getting tons of creasing. My forehead doesn't look as 
uh, dry as the rest of my face, so that's good. Like, my forehead doesn't look too bad. I'm getting a tiny bit of separation right there, but overall, don't mind how my forehead looks at all. I actually already ordered a different shade. I think I ordered cream right after I filmed, so I'm going to return this shade, and I'll get that one in, so I'll have that in for the swatches. But as of right now, I think if I put on just, like, a more moisturizing primer underneath and... I don't know if I'll be able to get this under control. I feel like I'll have to mix in a whole other foundation with this one. Probably, like I said, just a squirt of CYO and then do a setting spray over top. But I think that could help. I don't think on its own this one's going to be for dry skin just based on how it's sitting down here. But we will see how this looks at the end of the night. All right, it's not the end of the night. It's 9.14. So it's been on for 10 hours now. I've changed my shirt and things because I've just been watching The Bachelor on the couch. I just want to get comfy. So overall, it doesn't look kind of as bad as I thought after the initial application. It doesn't seem to have worn like horribly, but with that being said, I'm getting very dry in some weird spots. I don't usually get dry, like right on the bridge of my nose. Pretty dry looking right here on my chin, but the creasing doesn't seem to have gotten like majorly worse. I also look pretty dry around like my pore area. It doesn't look awful. One thing I'm noticing is that my blush bronzer, I guess I didn't put blush on today, but my bronzer and my highlight are basically like worn off on both sides it looks like and that can usually be a sign of like what's you know underneath it holding it on. So I feel like overall my face looks a little bit like faded in those areas but the overall finish and just how it's looking doesn't look terrible so that's good. For the price right now basically the one thing I like about this is two things. The coverage, full coverage, I like that a little bit goes a long way. And I do like how thin it feels and just kind of like comfortable on the skin. It just doesn't wear the best, but I do feel like this might be one that I can find a way to really like it. So I hope you guys enjoyed day nine of 15 days of foundation. If you did, you can give this video a thumbs up. I'm uploading every single day, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Days one through eight are linked down below in the playlist. I'm uh, gonna go back to Colton, watch some good old Colton, you know? I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye.